Bro, come on, man. Tell the story. You have a crispy man. lineup, and you don't know how to use a cell phone, bro. What's going on, bro? I'm, I, got, I got a high table and a low seat. Bro. Check this out. Shout out to Bring the Boy for the connection. He hosted a, um, I guess, a webinar last night, whatever you want to call it, master class. And my guy was in there. He's participating. He was he was uh, staying engaged. I'm like, yo, this is the type of people that I want around, people that execute. Because information is useless until you use it. So here's the introductions for those just tapping in. I'm Bruce Hill, New Skills, New You. I help you hear yes more often without sounding salesy. Story King, go ahead and introduce yourself, boss. Yeah, my name is Story King Brown. I own a consulting company by the name of Decide to Finish. And I'm also a full-time DJ and a Wall Street dropout. So I'm here off the strength of Brendan Boyd's live. He challenged us to go live with somebody. And I don't even know this is a good brother, but off the strength of Brendan, I'm like, look, you know, he seemed like cool people. I hopped in the DMs. I said, let's do it. You know, typically, as y'all can see from my setup, from everything, I don't go live. So I'm here. I'm down. I'm ready to talk, though. Man, you, you know what? I, I'm not even home right now, okay. but we get it done. And, and that's where I really, there's, there's a lesson here. Shout out to Brendan Boyd again, the Imperfect Action Show. I think, I know a lot of times people try and get it perfect before they get started, not realizing you got to get started to get perfect. That part. And so we, we're over here taking in perfect action. Tell us, what what's a Wall Street dropout, man? What's that mean? So, so honestly, it's a couple of things. So I'm from Chicago, Illinois, originally. I went to Howard University. And while I majored in marketing, I ended up going down the finance path, right? So I ended up, long story short, on Wall Street. I did a few years at Goldman Sachs, and then I transferred to uh, J.P. Morgan. And what, what happened was throughout that entire time, you know, I've always been musically inclined. I was a producer predominantly. So I had some placements with The Game, DJ Quick, a couple of Chicago artists. And when I got to New York, a lot of the times when I would go to these networking functions, they would just say, hey, you know, you're not a DJ. You should DJ my event. Yep. DJ, All right. DJ wasn't a skill set that I had, but enough people kept asking me where I was like, look, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and commit that. Yeah. Now, I, as you know, with the corporate world, you know, you, you go through promotions and you put in the long hours. But it got to a point where after I got my first promotion and then it was time for me to become a vice president, I realized, look, I don't first off, I don't want to do what it takes to become a vice president. <laughs> you know, it just, they put in too many hours and I'm looking at my manager like if that's what I'm working towards. I don't want to do that. I don't even want to get the goal of the promotion. You know, you might get a couple extra dollars, but. I don't want to commit to being in an office for those long hours, having all of those projects. So I realized I had kind of hit a ceiling, and I was at. Wait, a wait, point. pause, pause, pause. Huh? Hey, you have have a, uh, a, a almost guaranteed track to a title, to some level of success, level of financial compensation, but it wasn't worth trading your time. Why was that? Because I knew that this wasn't something that I uh, was passionate about. Now. Mm. Passion is subjective, you know, but it's something that I knew I didn't want to do for the next 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew for a fact that this, me being a 20-something year old, I couldn't see myself doing this when I was 60. And I, love I knew it. that if, if, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the calls and I, I see the way that, you know, the, the not only my vice president, but his boss, the managing director, mm -hmm. I see how they pulling up. They not broke by any means, they're very comfortable. But look, if I want to go to the Rolex store, if I want to go to the Porsche, I want to go get a, a Porsche or a Range Rover or something, what I'm doing right now is not going to get me there. So uh -huh. I, had to make, I had to make a decision. Like, look, if you want a, sort, a certain sort of life, you're going to have to do something different. Now, mm -hmm. I was blessed to mm -hmm. have experience of these investment banks on my resume. So I was like, look, worst come to worst, I can always come back. I'm young. You know, a lot of the times we, we don't realize you don't have to be, quote unquote, married to something. You can go out and explore a little bit and, and, and make your own way. So that's what I did. And um, at the at the same time, all of this is going on. I'm building up my, my music. I'm building up my DJ residencies. And it's come to a point where I can pay at least the bare minimum bills off my DJ. So I combine I combine that with the savings that I already have. And I was like, look, you know, we, we just going to become a Wall Street dropout for uh for reference, I have. Yo, I love. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Storykingbrent.com, you know what I mean? <laughs> Storykingbrent.com, but let is rich before forty. Um, throw some in the chat if you're still in here, boss. So I want y'all to catch that he he gave y'all the play. It's not that we're anti-job. It's not that we're anti-job. Absolutely. What's up, Deja? It's a matter of, 
of what are your priorities and what's your long time girl. So shout out to Rich Before 40 and the Black Business Click crew. Um, we have to look at is what we're doing going to create the life that we want. And so my guy Brian here realized it was not what he, if he kept doing what he was doing, he was going to get farther from where he wanted to go, not closer. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to ask yourself, what I'm doing today getting me farther or closer? Now, he didn't just quit his job. <laughs> I have one friend of mine, love this little kid, bro. He turned eight, He's 18, he'll be 19 this year. He quit his job because he said he didn't want to work there for 40 years. I'm like, bro, you ain't even worked there for four months. What are you talking about? I said, so I love that dude, though. Because <laughs> he dreams big. Right, right. But I, I need to make this an example because he's what... Brent told y'all is he did both for a little while. He had savings, he had a strategy, he had a plan. And a lot of people are bashing jobs. The job isn't the issue. You don't have a strategy. That's the issue. So you quit your job, now you have zero income. You have a business, but you don't have any income. And now you're like, ah, uh, what they say entrepreneurship isn't for me, right? I know I never man, this was a scam, right? No, you you just haven't done the work. What's up, Maya? So you had the savings. Your your DJ and have replaced your uh, income at least to cover expenses. Right. What did you do next to, to scale? So from there, I had to figure out how to operate without a job structure. You know, so ever since we we're little kids, we have structure in our life. When we're when we're infants, we have our parents to give us our structure. Then we go through the school system from kindergarten all the way up to senior high school. Then we go to college. We have a structure. We enter the job market, we have a daily structure, we have deliverables and tasks that we have to complete for our managers who fill in for that authoritative position. And then all of a sudden, you're out in the world, you're providing for yourself, and you don't answer to anybody. You don't, you don't have any uh, direct responsibilities or deliverables to do every day, and mm. you get used to having that type of free time. So to be quite honest, for the first year and some change, I had to get used to the freedom, you know? All right. And so the, this is very, very important, and, and I'm glad you said this. So shout out to Coach Michelle Wealth, the, uh, the Oprah of productivity. She teaches us we got to have a schedule, okay? We got to have a plan. And what happens, <clears throat> everybody's like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I do whatever I want with my time. But a lot of every business owner is an entrepreneur, but every entrepreneur isn't a business person. What's the difference, right? The difference is systems. What did you say? The distance is having a structure Absolutely. because what gets measured gets managed. And I, and I say this when I teach my clients, you have a consistent process that gives you consistent results. If you can't figure out why your income's up and down, it's probably because your activity is up and down. Mm -hmm. And so this is something else. I get a lot of people, they get a little bit too much freedom and they end up crashing and burning and they got to go back to work. No shade. It's a tough lesson to learn. We just try to help you skip some steps. One new skill will change your life. So how long did it take you to, to build a business? Not just a, a, a hustle. How long did it take you to build a business? I'm still in the process of building my business. So Ooh, right now, that's um, real? Absolutely. That's real? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hit a lot to anybody or to sell any type of dreams. You know, I'm, I've come to a place where, you know, my music is, is uh, supporting my daily expenses and my one-off uh, clients that I have for my consulting business are supporting me financially. So I'm, I'm not hurting for money, you know, but the problem is I'm still getting clarity on what it is that I want to offer the world. So all of my clients right now are within my network. There hasn't been a person outside of my network just to come to me and say, Hey, I need this, this set of services. Can you help? Ooh. So I what's up concrete cash? So let's pause right there. You hear what he said? Oh, brother, you are this, very this is good at uh, you are very good at hosting and doing live. I just want to say that I didn't want to cut your wisdom, but you do an excellent. Oh, job. this, this is what, what I do, man. This, this what I do. You making it real easy for us. So salute. And <laughs> hey, one new skill will change your life. So right. what you said was real key. You have the music is taking care of the basic expenses, and your consulting clients or that additional financial income. But it's just your network. Is people that already know you. Exactly. That's good. Right. That's what we call um, the proof of concept. And a lot of people are in this position, right? The people that already know, you're waiting for referrals, you're waiting for people to reach out to you, and you're not able to actively 
build a business. You're passively growing a business. Or maybe you're maintaining, okay? What's up, Mr. Dunn, right? My guy. So this is actually where I come in, if I may. Shout out to, shout out to New Skills, New You. We help you achieve sales success through eight simple steps so you hear yes more often without sounding salesy. It allows you to deliberately, actively, purposely get new clients by being yourself, okay? We don't want you to be that killer closer. We don't want you to be a master manipulator. We want you to be your authentic self that helps you hear yes more often. I'm working with a client, he's a disability inclusion uh, expert, and we're working with him on this exact same thing. You're dope, and a lot of the people on here, I saw Deja hop in, I saw Corinne hop in, some really amazing people, but how do we let the rest of the world know they're amazing? So I'll ask you this question. How are you planning, or if you already are, to grow your business outside of people who already know you? So I, I do have a plan. I haven't executed it yet, but to implement okay. uh, for the sales side of one of the businesses that I offer uh, to implement uh, virtual assistance to go ahead and call and make offers on my behalf to people that fit my criteria. Okay, so that's your chance for the plug. What's the offer? What, yes. Sir. Who are you going to help? How, how are you going to help them? And what's the result? Absolutely. So I have a business name, uh, Immaculate Travel Worldwide. We help small to medium businesses and nonprofits book travel for their executives and their staff. So what we do is we take away the uh, time that an employee has to spend booking their own flights through their own systems. We take care of all of that. We book the flight, travel, and itinerary on their behalf. And we do the check-ins. We do uh, everything seamless for them. And we pay all of the costs up front. And the business just reimburses us back uh, with a small service fee. What's up, Sims? So that's good. That was real good. I, I want to encourage you to put the result first okay. and then the who, what, afterwards. And I know I asked you in that order because that's I know most people's minds work that way. So for me, you say, look, we're going to help give you back your time and take care of your travel. Easy bar. Easy oh, bar. That's what's up. Because at the end of the day, I can book my own travel. There's nothing to stop me from doing it. Right. There's lots of websites and tools. So why don't I do it? I want it done right, and I want it done fast. People will pay you for faster and easier. People will pay you for faster and easier. So this is for everybody listening. If you're like, oh, people are going to pay me for this, people will pay you. Uh, mini master class coming in. Get your, get your notebooks out. There's five things. People will pay you for organization. They want, like you, like you said, itinerary, destination flights. They'll pay you for organization. They'll pay you for accountability. They know if we got to pay you, they're going to show up, okay? They'll pay you for community. They like to be around other folks doing the same thing. Um, they'll pay you for feedback. That's huge. They'll pay you for feedback because they'll say, like, oh, is this right? Is this the best? Is this the best way? And then they'll pay you for access. Sometimes people just want the expert. They want to be able to ask the expert question because, uh, well, Bruce, no one's going to pay me. They can YouTube it. They can Google it themselves. But I can't Google it if I don't know what to type in. So, oh, let me see if I can get this back. Organization, accountability, community feedback, and access. You may use a combination of those. You may use one or two. But this is a way that each and every service-based business in the sound of my voice, live, or the replay, you can increase your prices. People will pay you for those things. So, you're going to get a virtual assistant. Who are they going to reach out to? Small, uh, small to medium businesses and nonprofits who are who are frequent conference attendees. So, for instance, um, the nonprofit that I book on behalf of now, they send a lot of their employees to conferences across the United States. So mm. I handle the travel for those. It, it could be anywhere from one executive, or it could be twelve. Mm -hmm. That's why I was about to ask you how many employees, and I'll ask you another question: How many locations do these businesses have? Uh, so right now. It's just single clients that I'm working with. Okay. I want you to think about that. I was, I was talking to a company earlier today. They, uh, they work with businesses. Their sweet spot, they have 10 to 15 locations. Okay. And I was like, and I, have to, I can't even take credit for that one. I never thought about that. I always look at number of employees. I look at revenue. But locations is an important metric, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I will pass that on to you. Please. So uh, tell, me, tell me one goal. 
Tell me one goal for 2023. Give me one personal, one professional. Uh, so I, my, my goals for 2023 are listed in three different sectors, right? So my goal for 2023 is to become a rich, fit intellectual, right? Mm, so I'm all, okay. So the three, the three parts of that goes into for the rich part, uh, I want to take home 300000 and I want to have a $10,000 day in one of my businesses. I, I look at that as a sign that my systems are in order and I have what it takes to, to fulfill that. So that would be the rich sector. For the fit sector, um, I'm currently on a raw vegan journey. You can follow that journey at The Plug Vegan. Um, in June 6th of 2022, I began an all raw uh, food intake. And from that time, just from eating raw food alone, I've lost over 120 pounds. So since I- Let's go. You said 20, 20 pounds? 120 pounds. Oh, 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 120 pounds. My bad, my bad, my bad. We're here. You know, so I've, I've, I've taken that. And now it's getting to the point where I need to put muscle behind all of this weight, weight loss, right? So that's- sure. the that's the fit part. And my goal is to be uh, 199 pounds or less by the end of the year and have muscle definition by July. So that's the fit part. The intellectual part is going to play into the previous two sectors, right? So I pride myself on being a well-read individual. I pride myself on being somebody that's culturally uh, adept at, at many different things in society. And for me to step into this place of an individual who has a lot of income, um, and knowledge, I need to be a person that, that can share that as well. That means that I need to work on the way that I speak and present myself. I need to be culturally aware and, and everything that needs to be uh, shout out to everybody in the comments. I see a couple of my homies in there. <laughs> um, but, you know, going to Broadway play, going, be, uh, being well read, just being more intentional, intentional about increasing my intellectual capacity so that I can be in the mindset to accomplish the rich and the fit. So, Rich, mm, I like 2023. How about yourself, brother? I feel like, you know, I want to make sure there's a two-way conversation. I appreciate that, man. I'm I'm on some platform every single day, so I'm going to make sure okay. I eat. I'm going to make I'll make sure you eat too. So, so we'll talk about me a little bit, but um I want to ask how, how has your physical self and physical journey impacted your business? Uh think it assists in discipline and mindset which which mm. you, which you quickly realize when you um tell yourself that you're going to go on an all raw food intake um it's all mindset nothing there's there's, not, there's nothing um else that goes into it you just have to make a decision that this is what you're doing a lot of people are like man you don't miss steak and, and meat and of course meat. i do of i just course. got different goals tell them See, bro, you you get it, you know. So I can be at my favorite steakhouse, Peter Luger's, and I can have a salad while everybody else is is tearing down tomahawks, you know. Even the waiter is looking at me crazy. But I I, I use this example, and I got it from Myron Golden. It's just if you were in a room with five people that were doing heroin, would you do heroin? <laughs> I mean, why are you in that room? But nah. Right, but the, the point of it is you wouldn't do heroin because that's not something that you do, right? So if I say I'm not a person that eats anything except raw fruits and vegetables, I'm not going to be tempted by anything else because that's simply, I don't do that. So I wouldn't be tempted by it if my mindset is that that's not what I'm doing right now. So the, the, the mental tenacity increased tenfold when I made the decision. Ooh. Um, mental tenacity, that's a bar. Hey, uh, my boy uh, Dunn Wright asked, what city are you in, man? Where do you call home? Shout out to my boy Khalil. I saw him down in Tulum. Sure. What, what, city, where, what city are you in? Where are you repping? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay. BK? I'm originally from Chicago, um, but I live in uh, Brooklyn, New York, so shout out to all of the people. Okay. What about you? Okay. Uh, I'm in a, I, I call Atlanta home right now. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Shout out mm -hmm. to Khalil. Uh, so real quick, real quick, and we're going to get our commercials in. You mentioned being well-read. What's a, what's an impactful book you read last year? What's one you're looking forward to reading this year? Yeah, so the example I just gave was in uh, Myron Golden's book, book Boss Moves, uh, mm. which is a, a great book that I would encourage anybody um, out there to read. 
But, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy that was raised on the classics, man. You know, uh, the mystic education, the, mic, the autobiography of Malcolm X, um, The Way of the Superior Man is a book I read last year that was really great. Um, I'm, I'm reading Ash Cash's financial literacy book right now. Oh, that one's um, that's gold. Yeah. That's a good one. That's, that's what I'm reading right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, man. Um, that's, that's it. What about you? That's good. That's good. So what am I reading right now? I'm reading the Five Levels of Leadership okay. and the Fifth Agreement. Uh, coincidence that both start with five, but I think that's a significant. Wow. And, and I, I also supreme that matter. Absolutely. So I, I do, do believe too that you want to continue growing, continue learning. A lot of people graduate school and they stop learning, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's an ongoing process. I say that all the time. One new skill will change your life. So let's leave them with a gym, man. Let's leave them with an exhortation for 2023. So I'm going to get them fired up. Man, my, the whole, my whole mantra, uh, my whole umbrella, everything that I stand for is decide to finish. You have to make a decision to finish. You already have in your head what it is that you want to do. You've been thinking about it. You've had this plan probably for some years. What you need to do is make a decision to finish it. Decide to finish it and decide to finish whatever that is applies to you. There's something in your life that you've been hesitating about, need you to stop hesitating and just make the decision that you're going to see it through to the end. And there's no excuses because if you search for an excuse, you're going to find one. Stop finding the excuses. Set a date. Decide to finish and put some consequences behind it. If I don't, if I don't finish it, then I have to do something, fill in the blank, and that, ha that blank has to hurt you. You know, it has to hurt you whether it's financially, whether it's publicly. I don't know. You lose a bet to someone. I don't know. You have to decide what that is, but there has to be some consequences behind your decision not to not finish. So 2023, say, everybody say, type in the chat, 2023, I'm not playing with me. And that's what you have to do. Mm. Don't play 2023, with me. 2023, I'm not playing with me. <laughs> Story King Brent with the bars. <laughs> 2023, I'm not playing with me, man. Skills new you. If you're a service-based business, if you have a discovery call, solution call, consulting call, intro call, and you want to hear yes for often, but you don't want to sound salesy, I got something for you. You can visit www.hearyesmoreoften.com in my radio voice. Shout out to Ash Cash. www.hearyesmoreoften.com is a free training, okay? There's no funnel behind it. There's no upsell. It's just gems. So you can hear yes more often because I. what would that do to your business if you hear yes more often? What does that do to your revenue if you hear yes more often? What does that do to your life? So I believe one new skill will change your life. So I want to help you hear yes more often. If you're like, Bruce, I want to sound salesy. It's because you're talking to the wrong people. But that's in the training, man. Go get that. Go get you some and tell a friend to tell a friend. <laughs> and we're out. Man, I appreciate you, Brent. Man, salute. Hit me up. We'll do it again. We'll do it. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. Cheers to your success in 2023. Indeed. Peace. Yes, sir.